Hello and welcome back everyone to ABG Investor Days. My name is Adrian Gilani and I, I'm an equity research analyst here at ABG. Uh, we've arrived at our final presentation for today, which will be given by uh, CEO and founder at Zenis Fertilizer, Jakob Liedberg, as well as CFO Henrik Andersson. They will give a roughly 20 minute presentation and then hopefully we'll have time for some Q&A after that. Uh, with that being said, Jakob and Henrik, please go ahead. Thank you very much. So, and welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jacob Lindberg, CEO, one of the founders of Seniors Fertilizer. And my name is Henrik Andersson, I'm the CFO of uh, Seniors Fertilizer. So, welcome to today's presentation. Uh, we can jump into the first slide um, and I'll go through the purpose of Seniors Fertilizer. It's founded around an ID to bring to the uh, market the fertilizer industry a uh, green and fossil free fertilizer called potassium sulfate. And we do that by upcycling uh, byproducts and waste material from new emerging industries and existing industries such as pulp industries, but also EV battery producers, where we see the byproduct being generated. The whole project is built around uh, a proven technology, uh, so there's no technology risk. Uh, we have offtake agreements for our main product, the SOP, uh, already signed with a Dutch uh, fertilizer company. And we have protected ourselves with an IP, uh, with a number of uh, patents filed around applications uh, for this technology. Um, looking at the production KPIs, uh, we will bring products with a 100% reduction in CO2 footprint, which the market demands, driven by the market today. Uses of fertilizers require this from producers today. Uh, looking at the cost uh, point of view, we have a roughly 20% uh, lower cost of production compared to the existing producers today, the dominant uh, production route, Malheim process. I'll go through more of that in detail later. And uh, compared to the Malheim process, which is the dominant way uh, to produce SOP, we have a 50% lower energy consumption as well. And we operate in a totally fossil free context. The price of our products uh, onto, the, onto the market are imperative with existing products we find today. The next slide, please. So what drives the SOP market? Uh, the SOP market is driven predominantly by uh, the, the population growth in the world today. Uh, typically that's two, three percent. So fertilizer industry as a whole grows every year with the, uh, with the global population. Uh, secondly, as the world gets richer and GBT per capita grows, uh, spending habit, habits change. People spend more money on high-end crops and uh, <coughs> food, such as uh, vegetables, potato, uh, tomatoes, fruits, and so on, where uh, you need SOP as a fertilizer to grow them. And uh, today, uh, the agricultural industry as a whole stands for quite a big chunk of the CO2 emission problems we see. And this is where we fit in with a part of this puzzle to bring a green SOP, uh, potassium sulfate fertilizer to the market. Uh, so uh, looking generally, the fertilizer industry uh, plants need basically three components to grow, main nutrients, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. Seen as fertilizer, we operate in the potassium part of the fertilizer market. The potassium fertilizer market is predominantly uh, sourced by a product called MOP, which is a natural occurring salt called uh, or KCL, potassium chloride. This is the main product for when you uh, fertilize crops with, uh, with potassium. Uh, this is okay when you live in a uh, part of the world where you have lots of rainfall and you grow. Uh, wheat, corn, and, and that kind of crops. But if you operate in a dry climate, uh, you grow high-end products such as fruit, uh, uh, vegetables, uh, tomatoes, and so on, uh, with a higher price point in the market, they are sensitive to chlorides, and that's when you require a chloride-free potassium alternative, which is the potassium sulfate. Because the downside with MOP is that when you add potassium, at the same time you add chloride, and chlorides are actually harmful to plants. So uh, plants that are sensitive to chlorides rely on only SOP for the potassium source uh, of the nutrient. 
the total market for uh, potassium fertilizers is some 80 million tons. And from that, the SOP market stands for roughly 10% of that, that part. Uh, so, how is SOP produced today? Uh, SOP, the, our main product, the fertilizer, is produced today as many fertilizers are in a total fossile based context. It relies on an old reaction uh, temperature at 700 degrees that's driven by um, burning fossil fuels. Uh, the um, raw materials are byproduct generated out of the oil industry. So, uh, such as sulfuric acid, which is a byproduct from the oil refineries when you produce oil and gas. And when uh, in the reaction of um, uh, MOP, which is the salt used, the natural occurring salt and the sulfuric acid to produce the SOP, you at the same time co-produce and, and generate hydrochloric acid, which is a harmful um, chemical, a hazardous chemical. But this is the dominant way of producing, sorry, go back again. This is the dominant way of producing SOP today. Our way of doing it, uh, we cut down the energy consumption by half. We rely on only green electricity. And we, instead of relying on waste products from uh, the oil and gas industry, we take them from the pulp and paper industry, even battery producers and so on. Now we can switch. So looking at the business case, we looked at uh, the intake of raw materials. So we have partnership with uh, Northvolt, for example, to produce us with the byproduct from their EV battery production. We have an LOI with the chemical company BASF, uh, one of the world's largest chemical company. And of course, we're talking to the whole pulp industry in Sweden uh, at the moment. And for the other raw material, we require the natural occurring salt. Uh, we have an signed LOI ongoing discussions with K plus S, which is one of the world's largest potash producers. And on the on the offtake side, uh, as I mentioned initially, uh, all the production from plant number one and two has been sold already to Van Ypren, which is a Dutch fertilizer producer. And we have an LOI again, ongoing discussions with K plus S to secure the offtake for plants three and four as well. Okay, um, here you see our business plan going from 2024 to 2030, which is include six different plants. And this is our capacity, installed capacity we will have in different years. So 2024, we will have the first factory up and running in Q1 in Norfolk, and that will produce 100,000 tonnes on a yearly basis. And then we go forward. And the second factory will be in Fuleftio, and that will be in total of 200,000 tonnes, but it will be 100,000 tonnes coming 2025 and 100,000 and 100,000 2026. And what is important here is that for the two first factories, as Jacob showed in the other slide, we have secured all offtake, which is a total uh, installed capacity of 300,000 tonnes. Uh, and also the intake, uh, which you saw from Northwood before, which is actually also for uh, factory three coming later on. And then we have an LOI for factory three and four uh, going up to total, uh, which you can see up to 2028 when all that capacity will be installed by 850,000 tonnes. And for factory five and six, that is more strategic outlook, but in total we will produce in 2030 1.5 uh, million tonnes of SOP on a yearly basis when all six uh, factories are up and running with full capacity. You have to give an understanding with just one second, if you go back again, uh, 100,000 ton SOP production, uh, if we sell that today on today's market, uh, it, uh, the price per, is around 825 euros per ton or 9,300 9, sec per ton. So that's around 900 million or 900, uh, almost a billion uh, yearly sales in sec for, uh, for the first factory. And we can take the next slide. Uh, what's important to know um, with, uh, with SOP and MOP, as any other chemical industry, you, you gain on the premium between the intake of MOP and the, the finished goods SOP. And here you see a graph on the left hand side, you see our EBIT, uh, EBITDR margin. And if you look on the, the premium between MOP and SOP over time, if you take 10 or, or even uh, longer than that, the premium is always between two and three hundred dollars between MOP as the intake and SOP as the finished good. Average price is actually two fifty. And the important here is, even if the if the prices go up of SOP, 
Well, the margin in percentage might be slightly lower, but still it will be up above 20%. If the prices go down, the margin will actually increase, but we will not earn as much in euros or, or sec and so on. But the important is, no matter where it is between two and three dollars per ton premium, it is the margin is always about 20%. So it's really about taking this premium between the MOP and the SOP. That is really how you gain uh, the business here. Next slide. Okay, uh, so uh, this is slide presenting. We have launched our first project already. I'll go through that next on the next slide. But this is a chart showing uh, the time plan. So we're on target as it is. Um, we started the groundbreaking a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the uh, you see the team on the right hand side headed up the peak of the team, which is the project director, and their hand picked engineers and project managers for the project for the first plant in Alpha's week. And uh, this uh, groundbreaking was important for us to keep the timeline and also the budget, of course. And a picture again of the groundbreaking ceremony together with chairwoman of uh, Alfred Speak, the city where this first location is. Um, I'm on the picture there in the middle together with the MD of the construction company. And to the right hand side, you have a computer generated picture of the uh, office building and in the back, uh, the production facility, which is housing the entire process for the 100,000 ton of SOP and the footprint for that uh, area. The, that building is only 2,400 square meters. So it's not a super big industrial project, but rather a compact and efficient plant. In addition to this, what you don't see in the picture, we have a, a large warehouse. Uh, space for our two raw materials and our two products that we will produce in the process. And here we're going to uh, humor you with a small video if we can get that to work. I hope. Uh, and this is actually an area view of the production site. And we have started, um, I don't know if you can get the video going um, to see where this is located. We have selected a place um, logistically in a good logistical spot close to the har close to the harbor so you will soon see there to the right hand side the top corner and uh, this is an old industrial site so it's far away from people and it's also a, in a, a perfect spot for our uh, production so we have good access to a port where we can uh, bring in products and ship out or bring in raw material and ship out products and um, uh, we have started, uh, probably I guess there would be a question about the environmental permit, which is a separate process running in parallel to this. But as you see the project, this is a few weeks old now, this, this uh, video. So we're uh, good underway with filing and, and everything. And um, what's happening in parallel of this is, of course, the environmental permit process. And that is scheduled to take place on the 28th of March, which is just a couple of weeks away and uh, here we're confident that this will be uh, a positive outcome on this one so that's why we have started already as i said to be able to keep the time plan we promised okay uh, last slide summary of the case it's uh, we believe seeing this represent a really attractive investment opportunity it's an um, exciting product in a market that screams for uh, new green alternatives the project is built around a technology which presents no technical risk. It's proven already on a large scale. Um, we have protected ourselves with the patents, as I mentioned. Um, they are approved already for uh, waste material from the pulp industry, and they're pending as of now for um, EV battery producers and other industries as well, actually. Uh, we have key offtake and intake agreements to secure the case um, in both ends, uh, raw material and production. Uh, we planned the business case around six production plants um, totally. First one is already on the way now, uh, as of 13 of, of um, January this year. And uh, the products we generate will have, uh, will bring to the market, will have 100% reduction in CO2, which is actually what's driving um, farmers and so on looking for green products to, to help them reduce their own uh, footprint in the end. The, the production route we selected or ended up in compared to today's production, the dominant way, the Mannheim production, which is totally fossil based way of producing SOP, compared to that, we are less than 50% of the energy consumption 
uh, to produce the same amount of, of fertilizers, actually. And we work in a totally fossil-free context as well, so we require no fossil fuels whatsoever. And uh, production-wise, we have a more than 20% lower in production costs of, of uh, total production. And as I see on the cake in the end, we help customers solve circularity by utilizing waste or byproducts generated out of new industries, such as EV battery production and, and uh, pulp and paper industry, which is an, a backbone of the Swedish industry today, and help them to become more sustainable. So thanks, everybody. This was uh, all we had. We're open for any questions. So um, thank you. Perfect. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, I'll go right ahead with some Q&A. Uh, first of all, I, I believe you mentioned you were going to sell your products at market price. Uh, just considering that the production process is more green, do you see any possibility of sort of adding a green premium, so to say, to your product? Yes, uh, absolutely. But what we've done is to secure the uh, the offtake and uh, lock the business case on a long long agreement. We actually opted out to hand that premium over to our partners, um, Van and the Dutch company. But absolutely, there are green premiums in the market for products today. But this is, uh, we will sell our product at in, parity, in price parity to what's existing in the market today. Okay. Can you give us any sort of uh, rough idea of how large these green premiums are that are on the market right now? Uh, no, not in figures. It's hard for me to say because uh, if you operate out into the um, fertilizer industry, uh, close to farmers and users of the fertilizers and so on, you rely on agronomists and you have a completely different setup and then what we will have. We would be a more production-oriented focused company and do a, a lean and mean production and keep production costs low and provide a green product to um, our partners such as Fanipram. So, they would know that, and um, I can't give you a figure right now. Okay. Uh, regarding the production cost, you mentioned 20% lower production cost, uh, partly due to the uh, lower energy consumption. Uh, is this the main reason for the lower production cost? Are there any other factors why your uh, your process is preferable to the mana process from a cost perspective as well? No, as you said, one, we utilize less energy. I mean, we have 50% of the energy use compared to the existing mana production today. Uh, we don't need fossil fuels. I mean, increasing gas and oil prices are driving the Mannheim, Mannheim production cost up. And uh, they utilize, as I said, mentioned, a, a byproduct from oil and gas industry, which is sulfuric acid. And the price point of sulfuric acid is also driving up if uh, oil and gas industry, oil, oil production, uh, oil price of oil goes up. So there are three components actually in that. Less, en less energy use, 50%. They utilize fossil fuels and also byproducts from the oil and gas industry, which has a higher price point than waste material out of the pulp industry and either battery producers. Okay. Uh, and you mentioned that the process itself is very simple uh, and that you've sort of protected yourself against competition using patents. Uh, can you just talk a bit more specifically on yeah. what the, exactly it is that you have patented? Yeah, uh, it's um, the technology, as, as as we say, it's proven already. It existed since the 1950s. It has been used on a larger scale. What we filed patents for that we have uh, gotten approved already for the pulp, uh, it's actually application patents. So to utilize uh, the way um, the waste or byproduct generated out of a pulp mill, for example, or out of the EV battery producer, uh, that uh, waste material put into our process to produce SOP. So it's actually a whole application and use uh, pattern that around this that protects us uh, from operating um, with this process. So it actually locks out any competition from taking the same waste product with our technology to produce SOP. Yeah, I understand. Uh, also, uh, another question from a financing point of view, you expect to have the first plant up and running in, in 2024. Uh, and then you have fairly ambitious plans of opening up to five more plants after that. Uh, do you expect you're going to be able to finance that with internal cash flows, or would you need more equity for that as well? Uh, two things. Uh, internal cash flow will be the main thing, but also uh, loans, bank loans for, for the rest. So that is the, our, our future of the financing of factories. Mm -hmm. That is what we're building our model. Okay, perfect. Uh, and also uh, perhaps a, a general sort of market question from my end on... Um, on the potassium fertilizers, as I understand, two major producers of potassium fertilizers are Russia and Belarus. Can you just talk broadly about 
how uh, the sort of Europe's decoupling from those economies has affected the overall market? Yeah, the market prices uh, started actually with sanctions in Belarus. As you mentioned, Belarus and Russia are two large producers of, of uh, potassium-based fertilizers. And uh, starting with the sanctions and uh, the war in Ukraine um, that um, made this disruption in the market and, and prevented all the inflow from Belarus and Russia, dro dro uh, drove up the price points for MOP. And when MOP increase in price, SOP increase in price, because there is a premium between the two products. So that's what we've seen now the, uh, the, the past year, year and a half. But it's been a, a bit of a turbulence. But uh, as our case rely on a premium between MOP and SOP, that has maintained even during this uh, turbulence in the market. But yes, the market price has gone up as an effect of this. Okay. Uh, but since the premium is the same, what, uh, if anything, can you say about sort of the outlook for the premium of SOP to MOP? Is there any reason why we should see the premium expand or contract over time going forward? Not from my perspective. What we learn uh, is actually uh, looking at uh, uh, with glo global warming, for example, we believe that the use of SOP will increase because of the uh, drier climate, because if you have less rainfall, you cannot rely on MOP any longer for your fertilizer acid. So if you add chloride to the soil and you increase the salinity index, which is harmful for plants. So with drier climate, uh, you will actually have to switch from MOP to SOP. In uh, Middle East countries, for example, they have actually banned the use of uh, MOP and favor the use of SOP just because of this reason. Okay. And also, again, they have uh, increasing uh, growth in uh, greenhouse farming and so on. Okay. Uh, a final question from my end before we round off. Uh, a bit more near term, talking about the environmental permit. Uh, you said you were fairly confident to uh, be able to have a positive outcome here in March. Uh, in case there are any sort of... Uh, uh, completions needed to that. How long are you able to go uh, continuing your construction project as is before you need the permit, so, so to say? I mean, we have the, the production will start in Q1 2024. So we have the whole year on us. And uh, we see no reason why this would not be uh, approved um, now in March. So the hearing starts in 28, and this is quite a normal process. Because the building permits have been uh, approved and um, starting permits and so on for the construction. So that's why we, to keep the timeline, we started with the direction of the plant already, with construction of the plant. I mean. Okay. So we have no, no doubt that this will not be uh, approved in March as planned. Perfect. Uh, in that case, that was uh, all from me. I'd like to thank you for your presentation and for answering all of my questions. And. Uh, I'll uh, leave it up to you if you have some final remarks before we round off here. Well, from my side, from from my side thank you. thanks a lot for the Thanks you very yeah. much for the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.